Historical amnesia actually is a new field. It's only been around about 25 years or so inside of higher education. And what they began to notice was that why is it it seems like there's certain historical events are soon ignored within the professional literature? The first example of this was following the American Civil War. Excuse me, yes, the American Civil War. Whenever you begin to notice that the topic of slavery suddenly starts to drop out of the professional literature 30 years hence. And why is that? Well, what these historians end up arguing is that slavery was something that was uncomfortable, unmentionable. For them, they wanted to move beyond, and you begin to not see them talking about things that made them feel extremely uncomfortable. We're going to end up finding that the same kind of explanation could maybe be applied on why is it as we go into histories of higher education. A number of us have probably have all had to read those, haven't we, whenever we went through our higher education programs. How often did you see discussion about students with academic preparation issues? How often did you end up seeing discussions actually about faculty members? Or actually maybe curriculum, maybe a little bit more. What was probably the average history probably about in many of the great classic history books about higher education? What would be kind of some of the topics that you would probably guess probably predominate? Absolutely. So you're starting to have, they talk about the diversification of types of institutions. What else do you think might be inside of some of those great history books? The founding of the higher university. Absolutely. A lot of the administration, a lot of talk about trustees, a lot of talk about state legislators, funding, land grant institutions, the Morrill Act, the GI, Bill. GI Bill. You see a lot of federal talk, but you actually don't see very much discussion about people. And as somebody who spent a lot of time reading those, seldom do you ever see the students mentioned, except for maybe rare occasions about student disciplinary incidents. Conversations about curricula, um, moves us away from the classics and maybe branching into other areas of education. I think you're exactly right, Shane. So it seems like there's a lot of talk about buildings, there's a lot of talk about funding, some talk about the curriculum, but oddly enough, very little about students and actually very little about faculty members as well. So I think that this is part of the reason why sometimes people think that learning assistance really is a relatively new affair. And that's part of what we're trying to do about today is try to observe what is actually some of the history about learning assistance that really dates all the way back. This is a quotation here from Blight. The historical memory of any transforming or controversial event emerges from cultural and political competition from the choice to confront the past, to debate, and manipulate its meaning. And that's what they're probably arguing is that, why is it that suddenly slavery drops out of the literature about 30 years after the Civil War? People just don't want to deal with it anymore. Why is it that learning assistance doesn't seem to play a very prominent role inside of the histories? Well, part of it has to do with what they call image management. Long, long quotation up here. I can give you the uh, longer versions of many of these documents that have been published elsewhere. Part of it goes back to Colonial Williamsburg. And there was a great argument back during the 70s and 80s about what was being represented inside of Colonial Williamsburg, which is generally viewed as one of the most great and historic of all of our sites. There was never any mention about slavery. There was never any mention about disadvantaged people, economic class distinctions. And the only way that they started to begin to deal with that was an odd event where they started to deal with how clean it was at Williamsburg. And they ended up making an intentional decision to start allowing for horse droppings to appear on the grounds, as they called it, road apples. And what the historians who have really are severely critics of particularly historic landmarks is that we're not really dealing with history. What we're really dealing with is heritage. And the difference between history and heritage is that her heritage is that which we really appreciate, that which we warmly have memories of, but it's not necessarily accurate. I think in a lot of ways, learning assistance is also in some ways considered to be road apples as well. 